Hi, welcome to Unit 11, Day 3. In this lesson, we're going to look at geometric probability. So what does, when, when are we using these statistics skills we've been talking about the last two days? When are we using these in geometry? Why are we learning this here and not in some other math course? Okay, so we're going to look at geometric probability today, how we apply this to geometry. So we need to remember that when we're looking for the probability of some event happening, we look at the number of favorable outcomes over the number of total outcomes. So when I look at this line segment here, line segment RS, so from R all the way to S, it says if point M is chosen at random on the line segment, then what is the probability that point M is on segment KL? So I want point M to land on this segment right here. So my favorable distance that I have to land on is 18 units. Out of what is my total probability or my total length that I could land on? It's gonna be that 20 units plus that 18 units plus that 22 units. So the total distance I could land on is 20 plus 18, plus 22, which is 60. This, we're gonna simplify 18, because our probability is always a simplified ratio. 18 divided by 60, math, make it a fraction, 3 tenths. If we wanna see that as a percentage, math, make it a decimal. Multiply it by 100. We'll round to the tenths place today. Oh, we don't have to. It is 30%. Three tenths or 30% of the time, so almost a third of the time, I'm going to land on KL if I'm randomly choosing a point on the segment. Okay? Let's look at probability with area. Suppose, suppose a coin is flipped into a reflection pond and a reflection pond designed with colored tiles that form three concentric circles. Concentric just means one inside the other. Okay, so notice my circles. One, two, three, they're inside each other. That's what we mean by concentric. The diameter of the center circle is four feet and the circles are spread two feet apart. What is the probability that the coin lands in the center? Okay, so the probability that the coin lands in my center circle the favorable is landing in that center circle. So we need to find the area of that center circle. And where else can it land? It can land anywhere in the pond, right? So the total outcomes is going to be the area of the whole pond. So I need to find these two areas, okay? So first, I'm going to find the area of the center. the area of the center. Remember, area is pi r squared. So that's gonna be pi times the radius squared. My radius for the center, if it's four feet all the way across, then my radius is two. So my area for my center is going to be two squared, two times two is four, pi. And I'm going to leave the pi there. So my area here is 4 pi. Now let's look at the area for the base of the pond. Okay, so the area of the base, the whole pond basically. We're still doing pi r squared because it's still a circle. If it was some other shape, if it was a circle sitting inside of a rectangular pond, right? Then our whole pond would be a rectangle. But our whole pond is a circle. Pi r squared, so pi times the radius of the whole circle squared. So what is the radius of the whole circle? Well, I know this part here is two. And then it says this part here is two. And this part here is two. So that means my whole radius is two, four, six, units. 6 times 6 is 36, so this is 36 pi. Okay, so when I look at this here, 
I have four pi over 36 pi. What's kind of neat is without having multiplied that pi in, it actually makes this a lot simpler because I have a, if I have a pi in the numerator and a pi in the denominator, they're going to cancel each other out. So really, I just have 4 divided by 36, which as a fraction is 1 ninth. 1 ninth. So this is going to be 1 ninth is what my 4 over 36 reduces to, which is math as a decimal times 100 is 11.1%. That is the probability that if I just randomly toss that coin, like I turn around, I'm not even looking at it, and I just throw it over my shoulder back into the pond, it's going to be one out of nine times it lands in the center or 11.1%. Now, if I'm facing the pond and I'm looking at the center of the pond and I'm aiming for the center of the pond, that percentage is going to change. This is based on randomly throwing that coin into the pond. Okay? All right, in the next video, we're going to do a few more examples of probability, and we will continue on with our notes. So come on back for the next video. Thanks so much for watching.